Hello and welcome everybody to the Kenosha History Center run by the Kenosha County Historical Society. The Kenosha History Center will be reopening our doors to the public starting with a members only week on May 6th. Uh, we will reopen to the general public on Thursday, May 13th. This comes after an extended closure due to COVID-19 and some other building projects. We're excited to welcome people through our doors and we'll be operating our regular uh, open hours. Tuesday through Friday will be open 10 to 4.30, Saturday from 10 to 4, and Sunday noon to 4. Uh, we will be doing a brief tour this morning and just showing you around, and we look forward to sharing this history with the public. Hi, my name is Cynthia Nelson. I'm the curator archivist at the Kenosha History Center, and we're in our yesteryear gallery. Now our yesteryear gallery is just what you would think it would be, would be it is early Kenosha and Kenosha County history. Our oldest artifacts are here from our founding settlers of our community. And what's wonderful about this gallery is we have an original ox cart that would have come on the Erie Canal barges to Kenosha, all the way from Connecticut. And it only had, was only owned by the family that came here. Uh, we have an agricultural exhibit. We have a blacksmith exhibit, a train station. Uh, general store, a vignette of a schoolroom and a barber shop and that. This is the foundation, the core collection that started our organization to save community history. And this gallery is actually the favorite of the children. Our school, third grade school curriculum is based on this. So um, we would love for you to come and we would love for you to visit our organization. Come and see the things that we have that teach the founders, teach about the founders of our community. And welcome to the Rambler Gallery inside the Kenosha History Center. This gallery is really dedicated to the industrial and automotive history of Kenosha. When you come and visit the Kenosha History Center, you will come and learn about some of the industries that once made their home in Kenosha County. Uh, this includes some of the large automotive manufacturers that made their home in the city of Kenosha, including Jeffrey, Nash, and American Motors Corporation. Currently, we have four cars on display. A 1902 Jeffrey Rambler, which was the first mass-produced car here in Kenosha. A 1917 Jeffrey, which was the last Jeffrey produced. And uh, a Renault, as well as an American Motors Corporation uh, Hornet, a 1973 Levi's edition. In addition to those vehicles, we have other industrial memorabilia that uh, is on display and a 1934 Pierce fire truck. So come on down to the Kenosha History Center, learn about local history, and learn about um, some of the big industries that were once here in Kenosha. Archivist Cynthia Nelson here. Another section of our museum is the archives. A lot of people will call it the library, but what it is, it's our resource for our paper materials, but I pulled out a couple things that aren't necessarily paper. Um, wood sign, original sign from Bobby Nelson's Cheese and Sausage Shop. When that building closed down last year, um, they asked us if we wanted things for, for our collection. So these are the kinds of things we save. Um, signage from businesses, political signs, this is another sign that's come in. We have an extensive newspaper collection that goes from the 1840s until the 1940s. This is the a bound collection. It's one, it is actually our best resource we have. We have World War I post, or World War II posters, a World War I poster. We have an extensive poster collection. But our biggest collection besides newspapers are photographs. The photographs here on the table are actually the photographs from this accident in 1932 with the North Shore Electric Line. We are always looking to add local county and city photographs of people's lives, events, identified ones so we know what they are for our collections, but we also provide the services. You make an appointment with us, send us an email. We do research for people. We do genealogy for them. We help people with their buildings. Uh, we help with just general history that people have. Long as with it, it's within our county borders. Um, so if you want to come in, make an appointment, call us, send us an email, or you know we could take care of what you need. 
always will answer questions. That's what we're here for. We are the resource of community history, but we also are looking to add to our collections. Welcome to the Southport Light Station Museum. This is another museum from the Kenosha County Historical Society. We are welcoming people to our 2021 season here at the Lighthouse. Uh, we'll be open for the first week for members only on May 6th and then open to the general public starting Thursday, May 13th. Our hours here at the Lighthouse are Thursday through Saturday from 10 to 4 and Sundays from noon to 4. Uh, the Light Station Museum is a free museum to come to and people will have the opportunity to climb to the top of the Southport Lighthouse Tower. Uh, cost for climbs of the tower are $10 for adults and $5 for children. Now we're going to hear from uh, Southport Lighthouse historian Ron Luttrell. He is our lighthouse keeper here at the Kenosha Keepers House. Welcome back to Southport Light Station. I'm going to uh, give you a briefing a little bit on the Fresnel lens here. This is our uh, Fresnel lens. It's a fourth order Fresnel lens. It's not the original one that was up in our tower, but it is the size and type. When I say the order, that is actually the size of the, of the lens, and there's actually six orders. Common rule of thumb, smaller the number, bigger the lens. So sixes are about this big. That would be what's on our pier head lighthouse, the 1906 one, the red one that everybody knows of. Number ones are actually about 12 to 15 feet high and they can weigh about um, two to three tons. They're actually um, in ocean lighthouses. So the Great Lakes do not have number ones. The largest ones in the Great Lakes are number twos. Number twos are pretty big too. Um, Gross Point in Evanston actually has a number two for now lens in it. These lenses are way ahead of their time in design innovation. They're still being used today in lighthouses. Now they're electrified. One of the things I always like to say when people come down to the lighthouse, uh, I always tell them that there's four things in relation to the lighthouse. And I'll kind of tell you what those are. If you folks come down and tour, I'll de give, definitely give you a good tour and history and uh, education on it. The four things that count with the lighthouse, the first one is the cuckoo clock or the grandfather clock. I usually say cuckoo clock because when we have school tours, the kids can kind of relate to that more. So I definitely say the cuckoo clock. But the grandfather clock is the first one. Second one is the pipe organ. Third one is mercury, liquid metal. And the last one's gunpowder. These four things are very much in common with the lighthouse. And these four things are still being incorporated and used in lighthouses to this day. Anyways, next we will go up to the upstairs and we will discuss uh, some of the ship, uh, shipwrecks and uh, ship modeling, which is actually kind of a considered lost art today. Hello folks, welcome to our upstairs gallery. This is actually our, our SS Wisconsin room. I always like to let people know that these Great Lakes are actually in the oceans. They'll tear a ship apart just as bad as the ocean, if not worse. We actually have over 8,000 wrecks in the Great Lakes. There's over 3,000 on Lake Michigan alone, and only 1,000 of them have been found. One of our famous shipwrecks is the SS Wisconsin, which there's a model of it right here. It's a quarter scale model, which actually I built this model. So a lot of work and time went into it. Uh, this is actually one of our famous wrecks. It's actually sunk right out here, about 15 miles out, and it's in about 125 feet of water. It went bowed in a bad storm. And get the date, October 29th, 1929. That is actually the same day the stock market crashed. So there you talk about a ship with a lot of bad luck. The ship was struck by lightning. It actually had a collision. Uh, it's actually grounded several times. So it didn't have a, a very good record of um, trips and so forth. So, but anyways, uh, this, it's just known that this, um, this wreck here as you can see the model here, and we have some pictures of it on the walls here and so forth. And if our cameraman will focus over there, you, you'll see a board with the SS Wisconsin and it shows this is the way the model looked, or this is the way the ship looked in 1929 when it was sunk. This is the way it looks now over on the board. It's all underwater now. You can see divers on everything like that. Uh, you could even see that the automobiles are still on it as well. So it's a, quite a story. Uh, there's quite a few shipwreck stories that are really fascinating. Um, another thing too, we have another room that has uh, several other ship models in it. And as I was saying, um, 
downstairs. The model ship building is actually a lost art, but it is still very popular in like Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, over in European countries, Japan, and Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Uh, model ship building is very popular as well. So um, we, have, we get together uh, once a year, and we have a ship contest and everything like that, and it's very interesting subjects that people build and so forth. Uh, we have some interesting models in the next room. Um, they're historical. They're not exactly Great Lakes related, but they are very beautiful and very intricate. A lot of work went in time in building them. And um, so if you come down to the lighthouse station and check it out, and we'll definitely give you a good tour and educate you on the lighthouse as well. I want to just talk a little bit about our tower. Our tower is built in 1866. It stands 55 feet tall. It has 72 steps in it. It's actually the third tower that was built on this island. The first one was built in 1848. The second one was built in 1858. Both towers did not last very long because they were actually built on a very, uh, the ground was very unstable. So the foundation was very unstable and the towers tended to start shifting and leaning a lot. So they ended up crumbling and actually they had to tear down the 1858 one and they actually brought landfill in and granite rock to stabilize out the pedestal that the tower sits on. They built this one on it in 1866. It's been here ever since. So this, I guess, the third time's the charm. Uh, it's built our Milwaukee Cream City brick, a common brick made in Milwaukee in the 1800s. Uh, you'll find out in your travels that if you're in Milwaukee, Waukesha, uh, Elgin, Racine, Kenosha, that many dwellings and landmarks, for example, mansions, churches, old houses and so forth, and even factories were also built out of this material as well. It's actually a good brick. It weathers very well. Um, but around the early turn of the century, 1900s, the Cream City Brick was made no more. Keeper's House was built one year later in 1867. And of course, this is the original part of it right here. But this part here, the kitchen and the two additions that are on to the side there, which is not Cream City Brick, it's actually modern brick because uh, they weren't making the Cream City Brick anymore. Those were added on and um, those were added on 1867. Or 1906 and then when th when they built this here uh, they actually decommissioned this tower right here and they actually built the 1906 tower on the pier head which is actually the red one so that was up uh, uh, taken care of too so even though this tower was decommissioned they still had to take care of both towers so it was actually too much for a lighthouse keeper to do it so with that they actually had two additions on built, they had the additions added on in 1906 and they actually had two lighthouse families maintaining the towers at, at the same time. So the main keeper, the, the main keeper lived on the first floor with his family, the assistant lighthouse keeper and his family lived on the second floor and they shared the kitchen. So hopefully they got along good. So anyways, I'm looking forward for people coming down here. I'm looking forward to giving tours again. It's been over a year since I've done it and um, and I think you'll enjoy climbing the 72 steps and the view is great. All right, thank you very much. So now that you've seen some of the Kenosha History Center and the Southport Light Station Museum, we hope that you come on down and visit us soon in person. Uh, in addition to having open hours at the History Center and the Southport Light Station Museum, we'll also be doing our normal second Saturday Library Park walking tours. Those kick off at 11 a.m. and you can make a reservation here at the Kenosha History Center. And in addition to that, something new this year, we'll be doing cruising nights in the Kenosha History Center parking lot, typically the last Friday of each month, May through October. So come on down to the History Center and the Lighthouse and come learn about your local history.